Hello and welcome. Young Animal is a mature reader's imprint from DC that is intended to publish oddball superhero content that fits in the niche between their mainstream titles and the more adult material published by Vertigo. Young Animal is very reminiscent of the early days of Vertigo. When the line originally launched, it adopted some of the superhero content from the main DC line, and it also published a few superhero-related titles early on. However, the two imprints are rather distinct. Young Animal is firmly established as a part of the mainstream DC universe, and, in my opinion, it's directly aimed at a young adult audience, despite the mature reader's label. After all, mature is a vague term and can apply to a wide demographic. But considering the fact that each title has a young adult female in a lead role, which is the preferred protagonist in popular modern young adult fiction, I'm reasonably certain that the imprint is attempting to attract that particular market. It gives off the impression of a New 52 version of Vertigo, I suppose. With the exception of Doom Patrol, each title has had 12 issues and a special that directly ties into a mainstream DC title. At the time of this writing, two titles have relaunched with a slightly different title, giving the impression that each title is broken down into seasons, like a television show. However, this is clearly an attempt to get a sales bump and to save the imprint from being cancelled. Yes, that's a cynical take on the relaunch, but the sales data supports this position. Regardless, let's take a look at the entire line of titles that have been published so far. I just stare with my one class eye, hoping you won't be back again. In essence, Cave Carson is a straightforward adventure story that takes place in the cities beneath the surface of the Earth. There are some interesting twists and turns along the way, and, I have to admit, seeing Wild Dog back in action was both unexpected and well done. Overall, one can see the conflict in this series as a thinly veiled analogy between the interests of corporations versus the interests of society. It's not preachy at all, though, and it does get points for being subtle in this respect. It is a reasonably good series, but it's not overly interesting. But that's likely due to my tastes more than anything. It's not poorly done at all. It's just a concept that doesn't appeal to me. If you win, if you might, if you promise to the night. This is the title I expected I'd probably dig the most. But I have to admit, I couldn't get into the series at first. I think this was due to the writing style, which was a bit too terse in the first few issues. Panel transitions and scenes seemed very abrupt. But once I got used to how the story was being told, I thought it was done very well. There is a rather busy story going on, and it does a good job of establishing itself within the margins of Gotham City. The protagonist is young and angry, and like most young and angry people, feels righteous in their pursuit of justice. Her motivation is clear. Revenge. It is a solid series, and should the young animal imprint collapse, I think this character probably has the best bet of remaining visible in the DC universe. Bat chain. Pull up. Bat chain. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. This title mostly pays homage to the Grant Morrison era of Doom Patrol. It tries to capture the unique flavor that made the Morrison run work, but it doesn't quite get there in my opinion. The main problem is that there was an internal logic established by Morrison, and that gave the ensuing weirdness a context. Whereas in this current incarnation of Doom Patrol, that context seems to be lacking. Weird things happen because weird things happen. Furthermore, the stakes have to be clear. The danger to the team always seems ambiguous at best. Overall, what I'm trying to say is, the title needs to ground itself a tad more, and make motivations and intent clear. If it doesn't, then it kind of comes off as a writer, trying to impress an audience with how strange they can make things for the heroes. Which can be interesting, but not in the long term. Which isn't to say this is a bad title. It does have a lot of charm, to be honest. And it is good to see such characters as Flex Mentolo, Danny, and Jane back in action. The vibe is simply honest to goodness, wackiness, and fun. And I can't say it fails in that regard. This was the title I basically expected to hate. That's because I have a lot of baggage when it comes to this character. I'm quite familiar with both prior incarnations, and I adore them for completely different reasons. With that said, I really got into the groove of this interpretation. It really seems like a metaphor concerning the madness of simply being a teenager. It's about how friends and family have certain expectations of you, while internally, you have conflicting needs and desires. Finding the balance between expectation and satisfaction is, well, adapting to the madness of being unique in a world that expects otherwise. 
My only actual criticism is that the main character, who is supposed to be somewhat older than the body she inhabits, seems to lack the perspective of someone who's already experienced in life. Basically, it comes off as a teen girl taking over a teen girl, as opposed to a young woman taking over a teen girl. Yeah, that's, that's a little nitpicky, and can be explained away with very little effort. But I think it was a missed opportunity for some interesting character development. In this series, the Allreds pay homage to the creativity of Jack Kirby through the use of one of his lesser-known, currently dead creations. And, um, the, uh, artwork is great, and there's a lot of obscure characters that appear, but, uh, it's an incoherent mess. What is it for? Ah, this event did a few things. It introduced Eternity Girl in a series of backup features, and it gave the creators an opportunity to put their various creations in a new setting. Milk Wars is all very tongue-in-cheek, as this event does acknowledge what it's doing, and, in a way, makes fun of it. I don't know. The word that comes to mind when describing this event is disingenuous. It criticizes events in a very flat, self-aware manner, and it's a highly unconvincing approach. It's hipster irony, I suppose you could say, and that's always more pretentious than anything. In the end, the young animal imprint is interesting. As an overall line of comics, the tone and themes are consistent, but I do believe it has pushed itself too hard to appeal to a very specific demographic. It is too niche, I suppose you could say. It does that niche very well, but that doesn't always translate into success with a wider general audience. And that is the barrier that will likely end this imprint before it goes much further. If I could have another moment of your time, I would like to ask that if you enjoyed this or any other Overlord Comics content, that you support this channel by subscribing. This ensures you're notified of additional content as it's made available, Liking, commenting, and sharing is also a very fine way to show your support. Thank you for your time, and I will talk at you in the near future. Until next time. Oh!